Antonio Gramsci was born on January 22, 1891, in Cagliari, Italy. Gramsci came from a poor family with four children, but his incredible smarts won him a scholarship to Turin University in 1911. Gramsci's first true experience with Italian politics was in 1913, when he participated in the first universal suffrage election in Italy, which begun his relationship with the socialist movements there. His life in university was fruitful, despite his shockingly poor health. Gramsci suffered from an inadequate diet, nervous exhaustion, and a condition which gave him a hunchback appearance. Throughout his life, Gramsci had been recognized as a brilliant mind and a cut above his peers. Yet despite his promise in academia, he became an active member of the PSI, the Italian Socialist Party, and began a career in journalism. He began writing on several topics, including theater. He was not only a writer, however, and began to speak at several workers' study circles. The discussed topics were varied but always political. However, one of the most common topics was the teachings and works of Karl Marx. Marx was at this point and remained very influential throughout the life of Gramsci. Many of Gramsci's most influential and important writings came from when he was imprisoned by Mussolini. Now that you know something about his life, it's crucial to delve into some of his intellectual ideas. Gramsci saw the capitalist state as being fundamentally made up of two parts, a political society, which rules through forceful means, and a civil society, which rules through consent. In Gramsci's view, the civil society is the public sphere in which political parties and unions gain concessions from the state and the sphere in which ideas and beliefs were shaped, and where bourgeois hegemony was created through the media, university, and religious institutions to manufacture consent. Gramsci differed from many communists in his belief that the possibilities of direct revolutionary struggle for the means of production were limited. Instead, he argued that this revolution could only take place after a struggle over ideas and beliefs to replace the old hegemony with a new one. In case I've lost you, let me take a moment to define Gramsci's hegemony. He described hegemony as when a class had succeeded in persuading the other classes of society to accept its own moral, political, and cultural values. He also stressed that hegemony needed a certain level of consent from the masses to a certain direction suggested by the leaders of government and the community at large. This consent wasn't always peaceful and could even involve physical force, as well as coercion and intellectual, moral, and cultural inducement. Gramsci's thought was not limited to hegemony, however. He also argues that class struggle must always involve and put forth ideas and ideology, and that these ideas must make the revolution, yet also prevent it. He was also against economic determinism, as was found in Marx's thought, and instead recognized the autonomy and importance of culture and ideology. In his view, human agency is critical in revolution and historical change, holding the belief that economic crisis on its own would not be able to destroy capitalism. His ideas were brilliant, and reading a philosopher such as Gramsci can only serve to better your mind. Thank you for watching.